Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is recognizing types of forces. There's two questions we wish to answer. What are the various types of forces that could act on an object? And what's the best strategy for analyzing a physical situation and determining those specific types of forces that are acting on the object? Let's get started. This video, along with the next video titled Constructing Free Body Diagrams, make a great combination. In this video, what we're trying to do is learn how to analyze a physical situation and determine from the description of it what individual forces act on the object and to identify them by type. Now, before we get started, there's some cautions that we have to take. The first caution is that the criteria for the different force types are not always agreed upon from teacher to teacher. For example, one teacher's applied force might be another teacher's normal force, and one teacher's thrust force might be another teacher's applied force. One teacher's drag could be another teacher's air resistance force, and one teacher's gravity force might be another teacher's weight. So one of your responsibilities if you're taking a course is to tune into your teacher's language so that you know what exactly labels they're going to give to the various types of forces that act upon an object. That being said, one thing that we can say for certain is that a force is a push or pull that, that is exerted upon an object as a result of that object's interactions with the surroundings. And so we, while we may not agree upon what names we give to the various interactions of an object and its surroundings, what we do agree upon is the fact that the interactions are important. And so it's important to ask the question, how is an object interacting with its surroundings? So here's why thinking in terms of interactions is so important. A force is a push or pull that acts up on the object in question that results from its interaction with the other objects in its surroundings. The important ideas here are first, a force is a push or pull, and second, a force results from an interaction. Now when it comes to interactions, there's two types. There's contact interactions, and that's when the object in question is touching other objects in its surroundings. And then there's field interactions, which are somewhat the opposite. They result even though there's no contact with the object in the surroundings. So let's begin by talking about those contact force interactions. That's when the object in question is touching another object in its surroundings, and that's as a result of that contact, there's a push or pull. There's there's six types of these forces. We call them normal force, tension, spring, air resistance, friction, and applied. And we'll talk about these individually as we go through this presentation. The second type of force, the like large category of force, is called field forces. Field forces result even when there's no contact between the object in question and the secondary external object in the surroundings that's putting the push or pull on it. And examples of these types of forces are gravity, magnetic, and electrostatic. You don't have to be touching the earth to experience a gravity force. Two magnets don't have to be touching to exert a push or pull on one another. And two charged objects don't have to be touching in order to exert an electrostatic push or pull on one another. The first force we'll talk about is the gravity force. We represent it by the symbol F, grab. This is a non-contact force that acts between any two objects with mass. It always results because masses mutually attract one another. This idea is called universal gravitation. It will be a topic of several videos in future series of our video tutorial. Gravity forces are most significant when one or both of the objects are very massive like the Earth. So here's an example of a gravity force. The Earth pulls downwards upon any object that is near it. Now let's talk about some contact forces. The first is normal force. We represent it by the symbol F, norm. This is the force that results when an object presses against another object in its surrounding. An example is a person stands on the floor. The floor pushes up on the person with a normal force. As the person does stand on the floor, the feet of the person and the floor are pressed together, and that results in a normal force. Second example is a book is at rest on a table. When the book rests on the table, the table pushes up on the book with a normal force. This results because the book 
is pressing against the table and the table against the book. That results in this normal force. In both of these situations, the normal force acts from below because the surface pressing on the object is below the object. But it doesn't have to happen that way, nor does there have to be just one normal force acting upon an object. Here's another example of a normal force. If you look at the physics book, it's, being, it's pressing against the table and it's pressing against a chemistry book from above. This results in two normal forces. The table pushes up on the physics book, and the chemistry book pushes down on the physics book. We call it the normal force because the normal force acts perpendicular to the surface. And as such, we borrow a word from math class, normal, which means perpendicular to. Our next contact force is called tension force. This is a force transmitted through a string, a rope, a cable, or a wire that's pulled tight. We can use the symbol F-T-E-N-S for tension force. Here's an example. A box hangs from the ceiling by a cable. In such a situation, the cable exerts an upward tension force on the box. As a second example, a dog is pulled by a dog chain. In such an example, the chain exerts a tension force upon the dog. The tension forces are always directed in a direction parallel to the chain or the cable or the wire or the string. Spring forces, denoted by the symbol F spring, are sometimes conf confused with tension forces. Tension forces result from strings, wires, cables, chains, etc., but a spring force results when there's a stretched or compressed spring. Such a spring exerts the so-called spring force upon the objects that it's attached to. Here's an example in the picture. A mass is suspended from the ceiling by a spring. The spring exerts an upward pull upon the mass that we call F spring. Friction force is also a contact force. We denote it by the symbol F fricked. This is the force between two surfaces that are sliding, or at least attempting to slide, across each other. An example is a truck skids to a slop, stop along a road. In this case, friction exerts a backward force upon the truck. Or a baseball player slides across the infield dirt. In this situation, there's a force between the surface, the infield surface, and the player's uniform. It's a backwards friction force. In fact, friction usually opposes the motion of sliding objects. Friction will be at the topic of another video later in this video tutorial series. Air resistance is another contact force that results from objects that move through air. As an object moves through air, it collides with air particles, and the cumulative effect of all these collisions is it results in a force which we call air resistance and represent it by the symbol F air. A skydiver falling is one example of air resistance. As a skydiver falls, air resistance acts upwards upon the skydiver. But the object doesn't have to be in mid-air in order to encounter air resistance. It can be moving along the ground, and as it moves along the ground, it still collides with air particles. For example, a truck moving at high speed down the roadway. As it does, air resistance acts backwards on the truck. Air resistance tends to be greatest for high-speed objects that have very poor aerodynamics. Our final contact force is referred to as the applied force. It's the force exerted upon an object by a person pushing or pulling on that object. An example would be a worker who pushes a crate up a hill or even along a horizontal surface. There is an applied force acting upon the crate by the person. This force is usually a catch-all type of force to account for any other force that hasn't been covered by the other force types. Many people would refer to this force as a normal force instead of a applied force. After all, when you think about it, it's the force that results from two objects pressing together. If you've already counted the crate worker interaction by another type of force, then you wouldn't count it a second time and call it an applied force. Recognizing the types of forces acting upon an object is not an end in itself, but rather a means to another end, and that other end is the act of drawing a free body diagram. That's the topic of our very next video in this tutorial series, and we welcome you to watch that. 
So at this time in every video, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for helping you make the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, I was wondering if you could help us out. First of all, if you like the video, maybe you can hit the like button down below, or even subscribe to our channel. And once you subscribe, uh, tap on the bell and get notifications when new videos come out. Finally, there's a place down below where you can leave questions and comments. Uh, love you to do so. Okay, now for the action plan. First of all, at our website, we have a section called Concept Builders. And in that section is a concept builder called Recognizing Forces. It's probably the best thing you can do to make this learning stick. We have a link to that location in the description section down below this video. Second, we have a, a, a section called Physics Interactives. And in that section, the Newton's Law chapter, what you're going to find is an activity called Drawing Free Body Diagrams. It's another next step for making this learning stick. Finally, we have a tutorial on our website in the Newton's Law chapter. There's a page called Types of Forces. You'll find a link to all these resources in our description section below this video. Whatever you do, we wish you the best of luck.